Hello, folks. We're, uh, this is sort of an emergency examination, but it's not really an emergency. Tanya just had the idea. And I invited the brew dude because he said he was going to get this too, but he might have forgotten about it. Well, what we're looking at is Corbell XS, which stands for Extra Smooth California Brandy. And by the way, XS is not a real grade. It's just something they made up because it sounds kind of nice. Uh, and I call this tasting number one because if the brew dude gets one, you know, I'm not going to obviously drink this whole bottle today. We could do another one. And I've, I've learned something. you got to follow these up because um, I did a cognac showdown yesterday and I was completely wrong. <laughs> so we have Tanya with your, you usually, usually do beer, but you're not exclusive to it. And we have Eric who's observer status today. He yeah. usually does beer, but I don't think he's like only beer. But I actually do a little bit of wine, but yeah. I have a port wine in the in the cabinet that I'm waiting to do. Um, actually, yeah. also from California. But Tanya, you said you had some experience with Corbell, and I have zero experience with Corbell. It's an old brand since like the 1880s. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this uh, yeah. Or Christmas of 2006, which or I think it was 2006, um, which would have been and um, three three brandies, and I don't even remember what, what um, maybe VSOP um, or um, and the excess was in there, um, which has which is the lovely red and black forever burned in my memory. Yeah. Now, um, um, making a Christmas present for my son, we tasted our way through the three, and this one was just so good and so in favorite. Uh, you, brandy. you were cutting out a little bit uh, there. Sorry, but um, could have been my fault on my end because I was setting something up. But you said that um, somebody gave those to you. Yeah, uh, like a tasting box or what a video that's uploading right now and it says it has eight minutes remaining so that might make my internet slow so oh, sorry right, about that right 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 no problem i'm trying to set up the online uh chat in case viewers want to talk to us also so that's going to come up in a minute um well um <clears throat> you were talking about corb i had seen corbell in the New Orleans area. I don't see it around here. Although we get all their champagnes, you know. Uh, they said this guy Corbell. He left Germany, and uh, he fled after a revolution that he was involved in. <laughs> he was in trouble, but he he went to California and he, um, like so many German immigrants, started making liquor. But he chose wine instead of beer. No problem. He was up. Uh, I believe he may have been from the, what today is called the Czech Republic. But at that time, it was part of the German Confederation. So regardless, he came over here and he started this company. I don't know if you've ever had any of their champagnes, their bubbly wines. I have not. Yeah. As, as Madeline, it says that um, it's blended and bottled by Corbell, Burnville, California. Burnville actually is not that far from me. It's in the Napa Valley area, um, and uh, where all of the famous California and um, they have a lot of great beer out there too. I through wine country by drinking beer. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about that because I was wondering where that that place was located. Uh, I think the XS is their newest of the lineup. Their original is the, of course, you know, the Corbell California Brandy. And then they added some others to their lineup. You were talking about this. Uh, let's see. We should have our, okay, I think our chat is ready and in case anybody wants to say anything. Um, I'll leave Facebook open, but I have it muted. So I won't be disturbed with chimes. Uh, they have their original, their Corbell California brandy. They have their <clears throat> VSOP, which you've said you had. 
they have the XS, which you're, we're do, looking at today. And then there's one they introduced called Corbell 12 year, which is age 12 years. And I have never seen that, but I'm sure it costs a little bit of money. It's sort of like their ultra premium. Have you had that 12 year? I have not. I have not. Now I'm, I'm interested to imagine that it would get me. So. Yeah, it's in a beautiful looking bottle. Now let's see, they have some Want, they have some notes, okay? You want me to read the notes, this PDF file? This is from 2014. Maybe that's when this was introduced. No, it had to be before that. Let me look at this bottle. Let's see. I bought this at a local uh, gas station. We don't really have liquor stores here. We have gas stations that sell everything. Uh, it was about five bucks for this. Um, uh, what's the size of it? What, 200 milliliter bottle? Doesn't say, that's strange. Um, let's say, oh yeah, 200 milliliter bottle. Oh yeah, okay, uh, Guerneville, California. Um, extra smooth, artistically blended in the Corbell Champagne Cellars, brandy with spices and natural flavors. But you don't have any idea how much a regular size bottle would be, huh? Um, I don't need to pay attention to that. So I bought, um, and, uh, and I bought it, uh, I don't even know, maybe, maybe in the last week. Um, and I was, I think it might even be under $15. Um, it's not bad. Yeah, right, it is. Now they said on this, uh, tasting sheet or this sell sheet and it's a good website i like this website because it's giving you giving you the history of the company and it's telling you about each brandy and giving you good notes so it says appellation california that's a legal term the u.s government mm -hmm. they have these appellations there's different parts of the country that they have to list distillation copper line continuous column that's the method they also have another common method, but they're using continuous column. Distillation proof, it's distilled at 169 proof. <laughs> it's barrel aged in wow. 50, <laughs> it's barrel aged in 52 gallon charred American oak. The barrel aging proof is 130 and the bottling proof is 80, so that's 40%. Cases produced, they said uh, 30,000 cases annually and it comes in bottle sizes of 50. 200 like I've got 375 and 750 it says uh this brandy is blended to be the ultimate in luxury and smoothness we blend our fine with natural uh, I'm not I'm gonna skip over some natural flavors uh small oak barrels they add small amounts of premium vanilla natural orange essence spices and pure cane sugar oh cane sugar comes from louisiana the result is a sinfully luxurious flavor sensation um try it with your favorite mixer or all by itself um corbell is the only major brandy maker in the u.s which still maintains total control of its own wine making brandy distillation barrel aging blending and bottling our own people in our own facilities <laughs> closely control every step of the brandy process and the awards are this has won, now these are the Planet Grape Wine Review, which I'm not familiar with, gave it an 87 rating last year. The San Diego International Wine Competition gave it a silver medal, 88 points last year. And two years ago, Long Beach Grand Cru gave it a gold. So let's see what Erica Lyons fan says. Oh, he says thumbs up. So uh, I guess we better get to the tasting enough for the any comments? Let's see. No. Anybody watching? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Are you drinking on this right now? I am. Yeah. Uh oh. Oops. Now what? <laughs> what size bottle do you have? Mm. Even fit in the whole screen. Three seven. Oh, that's seven fifty. 
Yeah. Now, uh, look and at I this. And I turn a regular size glass, not a tiny little glass either. So. Yes, I see that. I somebody gave me this snifter glass today. They gave me two of them. And I had been wanting a snifter, a regular snifter glass. So here we go. And and it's a brand. It says, and I don't know about this brand. I'm gonna have to do some research. It's called uh, Di Amore. What is Di Amore? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look that up. Does it have a some kind of a, a thing on the side of it? I can only barely see. Yeah, it says Di Amore, and it's got a crest with two lines and a fleur de lis, three fleur de lis, and a crown. It says Premier Classico. <laughs> Maybe it's a liqueur. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know Di Amore. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's the color here? This is amber. Uh, yeah, I think so. Pretty amber. I mean, I think it has a little tinge of red to it. Um, but yeah, amber definitely. Um, and aroma wise, I get a lot of like butterscotch off of this. You're getting some alcohol eggs, huh? I sure am. Oh yeah, for sure. I actually iced mine, um, which I think uh, affects how leggy it gets, but definitely leggy. Now we got some viewers. Uh, Ron Dog says cheers, and he says he's drinking E and J. And Eric, oh, Lines, which Eric, E and J? Yeah, I was about to ask which E and J, Ron Dog. And Eric says cheers, Ron Dog. I don't know Ron Dog, but welcome, Ron Dog. Um, oh, the EXO. That's a good one. I wonder what he's drinking. The EXO is their top, huh? Yeah, I think so. And comparably, I thought that I had um, another Corbell brandy, but I guess I didn't. But comparatively, it's just not, not even in the same park, in my opinion. You mean the Corbell, what you're drinking right now is not comparable to the EXO? Um, meaning XS, Corbell XS, is superior to ENJ EXO. In oh, my opinion. Wow. That's interesting. What do you get when you smell this? Um <sighs> give me a minute. Well, oh, let me say this, Tanya. I've never had a spice brandy in my life, okay? So it's kind of new, but it's very new. It's completely new. Well, first I'm getting a really strong whiff of alcohol. I mean, it's like Yeah. But what do you expect? 80 proof. Um, maybe the spices, but you know what? Honestly, if I didn't know it was a spice brandy, I don't know if I'd be talking about that right now. Right. You know, actually, I had to read it again when you said spices just now. So I was like, well, I don't know if I would call this spiced necessarily. I mean, it definitely has a vanilla smoothness. <sighs> So, and you can smell that a little bit in the in the aroma, but you know how these spice beers sometimes it's sort of an overload of spices. Right. It looks like they must have gone really subtle with this one, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and by the way, this company is owned by Brown Foreman, who also owns Jack Daniels. Just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. Well. I'm going to let you lead because you've had it so you can lead with the tasting. And Eric's drinking a 22-ounce bomber. He's having a good time over there on Christmas day two, second day of Christmas. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so I have to preface everything I'm about to say with the fact that this is my favorite brandy. Um, so I am biased. Um, I like this because it's very smooth and sippable. Um, otherwise, when I have brandy, I really want to mix it into an eggnog. Um, uh, right. To cut, you know, to cut it. Um, and this one, I feel like, as much as it's a very clean, um, you know, respectable alcohol, it has this nice softness of vanilla around it that I really, really, really appreciate. Um, and when I smell it, I always smell butterscotch, but when I taste it, I always smell vanilla. Um, I don't really get a lot of orange necessarily. I don't get a lot of spice. It's mostly vanilla to me. Um, and then just that nice, clean brandy flavor. Now, now Ron Dog says he's drinking the XO. 
and he says, I'm a longtime viewer of yours, Ron, and I appreciate that, Ron Dog. I really do appreciate it. Now, thumbs up to that. Thumbs up to that. Let me go with the taste because I'm, I'm, this is so interesting. When I first bought it, right, I'm like, uh, spiced, flavored, bull crap. But I had bought it, you know. But then when I started reading on the website, I was like, okay, this seems like it's legitimate. Wow, this is, you can definitely tell it's spiced when you taste it. Okay, you said vanilla, I'm saying vanilla. Yeah. But I'm picking up those spices like, um, but it's a taste. I've never tasted a spiced broom from Cost Plus World Market, but I smelled those brooms. You know those cinnamon brooms or whatever they call them, potpourri? Oh, yeah. I was gonna say maybe clove and orange, maybe. Definitely the sugar though. I'm telling you right now, I'm picking up that cane sugar. Well, I don't think you need to mix this. I think it stands on its own. Now the the E and J X O, you're probably going to use that as a mixer, right? Exactly. exactly. That's why I have it. And if you get the E and J V S, you're definitely going to use it as a mixer because it tends to be a little harsh. Eric, you leaving us? <laughs> well, if you it's already, shirt. okay, yeah, put on that lion shirt. Okay, you leaving, Eric? But you don't have to leave. You don't have to leave. Okay. No, no, I just had to get my mouse right here. I'll just be muted and just listening to you guys. Okay. Wow. This thing is something else. Now, my daughter, right, like, she loves spiced and flavored stuff. I'm not a big fan, you know, but um, she would just be, like, going crazy over this, I think. It's good. It's got a lot of and what you would call holiday spices. So, people... If you like holiday spices, you would like this. And I think it would help accentuate uh, eggnog. And it doesn't taste like fake artificial bologna spices. I agree. Um, the X, the e and XO, I will mix into a whole glass of eggnog. Um, but this one I poured for myself the other day. I poured a nice healthy portion, and then I put a scoop of eggnog ice cream in it, that was pretty decadent because it was almost exactly a one-to-one -one mix as opposed to when you're mixing bad brandy into eggnog and you're trying to, you know, light, you're trying to dull the harshness. Um, just a little bit of um, the ice cream in this was just really great. It was like adult floats. It was awesome. Recommend trying it. Wow. Now, folks, if you ever want to try something that you will never dull the harshness of, <laughs> <laughs> get some Hartley brandy. Woo. You will never dull that. That I drank that bottle and I was like every sip I had to negotiate every sip. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> right? I, I said to myself, this is remarkable in a way because it, every store sells it and they'll even put it in the newspaper and the ads. We have this on sale. And I'm like, I don't even know why people would buy it. So people buy it because people are cheap. But anyway, Hartley, it's from Italy, but it's ghastly. It's unimaginable. It's like, yes. in some ways, they're interesting to try because you can get a good uh, reference point of what bad truly is, you know? Like somebody might say, oh, I've had E and J V S, it's bad. Buddy, you don't know what bad is. Get some Hartley. It's just, but yeah, like I said, each sip I had to negotiate it. Wow, that's, I feel like that's, um, that's rough. Why do they make that? I guess just for, as a price point, I suppose. Oh my goodness, why did they make it? Why did they make it? But I did drink the whole bottle, I was proud. I was sad, but I was proud. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's like unimaginable, but, um, do they have gins that are that bad? They might. I haven't had one yet. I've had some that are heading down toward that road. I have one in the freezer that's on that highway. Um. Anyway, back to this. The body on this is like medium, light to medium. It's not heavy. It's not thick or syrupy. 
Yeah, even though it seems to have a lot of sugar in it, it really isn't heavy or syrupy or cloying or overly sweet. I don't, I mean, I I don't even know that I would describe it as sweet as much as just um, softened with vanilla. Sounds and like marketing. Right, and the problem with this one is that it's got that spiciness, it's got the sugariness that appeals to a lot of people that are repelled by, you know, alcohol flavor. You know, that, that turns a lot of people off, right? So this could get them in a lot of trouble at a Christmas or New Year's Eve party because they'd be drinking it and they say, oh, it's sweet, it's spicy. And then next thing they're falling into the Christmas tree and busting somebody's window. And, Dang it. You know, don't, <laughs> don't you see that kind of thing could happen? You know, those kind of things happen at these parties, right? You know, actually, I, uh, I had a party here on Saturday night and I hadn't even opened this um brandy yet and so it was still sealed it had the the um the seal on it and somebody's like oh can you pour me a glass of brandy um i guess i'll take the e and j x o it seems to be open and i was like you sure will <laughs> like <laughs> i'm not ready for that kind of christmas party uh i need you to be mediated by the fact that you have to breathe between those drinks right yeah and i think the e and j whether it's the uh, VS or the uh, VSOP or the XO, you know, you're not going to just like get too crazy with those because they're, they're not the smoothest thing on the planet. I was drinking this Hennessy VSOP privilege and the Hennessy black. Look, those are much smoother brandies than ENJ. And I am not saying this to put down ENJ. Okay. I think ENJ brandy is a good value. You're getting a big old jug for a low price. It's serviceable. It'll work. But, of course, you get the Hennessy, you got to pay twice as much, naturally. You know, but it's it's a different world, kind of like, and, and people are laughing, watching, saying, you fool. Uh, Hennessy privilege is only $30 a bottle. You can get some that's $3,000 a bottle. You don't know what good is. That's probably true. That's probably very true, but I'm not going to find out either. <laughs> right. I'm not going to find out out of my wallet, at least. Invite me to that party, however. I'll let you know how, what I think of it. Uh, I'm a longtime viewer of yours, Ron. Now, Blackie Lawless says, Ron, okay, all right, Blackie, uh, you do get these trolls. Okay, but well, we're going to ignore you because some people are insane. All right, cheers, Ron. Sounds tasty. What's up, YouTube? Says, what's up, Ronald? And then he tells Blackie. Yeah, well... You always run across some. Dang it! I'm missing all. Naughty, of naughty. Moments. What are you missing? Nothing. I don't know. Nothing. Anyway, I'll drink to that. Cheers. Okay, Blackie. Remember when we were going to the gay bathhouses together? All right. Anyway, you forget so quickly. All right. No, just people saying inappropriate, stupid. I can play along. I can be a big fool. Hey, but um, you know what? I like this brandy. I was about to ask what your overall opinion of it is. I feel like, and I know that you already know my opinion of it, um, but this is the brandy that I would always want to introduce somebody to. Yes, and I think it would appeal to certain people like my daughter, who is big into the spiced stuff. Now, for me, I really rather the straight stuff. I don't. I don't know why. I don't, I don't even know why I prefer the unadulterated. It's kind of weird, you know. But um, I really want to try that Corbell uh, California brandy that I saw at the store down there in New Orleans. It's about fifteen dollars a bottle. That's like the classic one, right, from the eighteen eighties. But you know, for a modern, a contemporary, postmodern, spiced concoction. Uh I don't see anything wrong with it. Everybody's doing it, right? You got the spiced Jack Daniels. You got the spiced Jim Beam. You got the spiced everything, right? Name a name a liquor, name a beer, and there's spiced everything. Well, there's not spiced Budweiser yet, but it's coming probably. Hey, you know, I got no problem with it. I like it. I would recommend it. I, I don't see any problems with it. What's wrong with this brandy? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't see anything wrong with it. 
I mean, maybe that it's sweet, and if you drink too many, you know, like sweetness can get to you, but just don't drink too many. Oh, my goodness. If you drank too much of this, the next day, you would be so sorry because it's so sweet and sugary, but that's on you. That's your problem yeah. if you drink too much. Like, why would you eat half of a, a German chocolate cake, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Now, what's up, says Crowbar Pantera Country, New Orleans, Louisiana. Yep. Blackie says, you got, what is this guy? Uh, well, let's ignore that because, um, yeah, I went to see, yeah, by the way, Blackie, um, you can say whatever you want because I don't care. Secondly, I went to see Wasp in concert in 1985, and they were horrible. Okay, I hated that group. They were idiotic. But anyway, you know, it doesn't matter, but. That was on the Iron Maiden uh, Power Slave tour, which, by the way, I thought the concert was kind of boring because I did not really want to hear a 20-minute song about Samuel Taylor Coleridge's rhyme in the Ancient Mariner. It doesn't really fit heavy metal, but some people would disagree. But, you know, I could look around the arena and see how people going to sleep and getting pillows out. But anyway, you know, <laughs> it, was fine. it was fine. I don't think the ticket was like thirteen dollars. But when so I went, but when I went, thirteen dollars. Yeah, I went, but when I went to see Iron Maiden um, three years later, it was a much better concert. It had much more energy. It really rolled along fast. And oddly, I don't think there was an opening act for some reason that night. It was just them, which is kind of rare, you know, just to see a band without an opening act. But, you know, anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up. It has nothing to do with this brandy. Um, so, Tanya, you had this spur of the moment idea. And I am happy that you had this idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. Um, now I want to walk over and get some more of that ice cream from that place near me. Um, clearly, I shouldn't drive, but I can walk over and get some more eggnog ice cream. You must have been off today, huh? Mm. Kind of. I did do some work in the morning, but um, I had a beer with lunch, and I didn't go back. Oh, I was at work for eight hours. Hey. This brandy is good. I'm going to top it off tonight with not a lot of drinking. In fact, I'm going to drink one more Negro Modelo, which my daughter did not like, by the way. She told me, thank you for the gross beer. But <laughs> I did like it. Everybody cannot agree on everything. Um, Eric says, however, I, however, was not at work. Oh, ain't that special? Hey, you lucky <laughs> little dog. Uh, let's see what else is happening besides the uh, foolish ninth grade drama. Uh, Tim Warren says, you got some interesting comments this time around, Ron, LOL, yeah, right. You're right, laugh out loud or cry out loud, I should say. What's up, YouTube says, I'm drinking Yingling traditional lager glass bottled and Bush 16 ounce can. I would say, okay, I can live with that, but that's me, you know me. Oh, gringo, chingo gringo. Oh yeah, the guy down in Mexico, he says, cheer, Ron, I'm sipping on some Terry Centenario Brandy de Jerez. Oh, my goodness. Well, Tanya, we can't match up to that, I don't believe. Oh, we cannot match up to that. This Corbell XS sounds like a brandy I would like. I'm not sure if I'd be able to find it down here in Cancun, Mexico. I'm pretty sure that ain't going to happen, but. I don't know. I, it, and actually, I mean, just hop across the border, right? Cancun's close enough to California. You can get it. I, I bet you'd be surprised wait, by wait, what you can Wait, wait. Cancun's way out in the Gulf of Mexico now. But I bet you'd oh, be surprised. Pardon my be. geography. Now, Kringo, yeah, he, you might be right, Eric. He might be able to get Chingo Gringo says, I'm sipping on some, what is it? Terry Centenario Brandy de Jerez. Oh, well, you got my interest peaked. Hey, well, I guess we better shut it down. The news is coming on. I want to see what's on the news. But uh, hey, Tanya, if you ever get any of these crazy ideas again, hit me up because we could do it probably. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out. It worked All right, out. I had brought over a second glass with ice and everything for this XO E and J, but I can't even go. I can't even go backward. I'm just gonna pour another excess. I would drink the E and J XO with you, but unfortunately, I do not have any of that. I drank all of my stash. Oh, but I've got some Christian Brothers VS. Oh, that's another story. Christian Brothers. Ooh. My daughter said, "Ugh, gross." It does smell. Yeah. Like, it does smell like log cabin country kitchen syrup. But um, you know, oh well. I only paid ninety nine nine ninety nine for the big bottle at Walmart. <laughs> What's wrong with log cabin syrup? 
nothing, but you don't expect it to be in a brandy bottle. <laughs> true, true. Hey, well, folks, that's it. It's over, but it's not. I mean, this is over, but it isn't over, right? All right. Thanks, and join us again soon for more alcohol, wine, and beer explorations.